Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Rossnagel, Director of Communications for the Louisiana Conference, and we are so excited about an upcoming workshop that will be held in Woodworth, where we are going to be joined by Sabrina Joy Stevens, who joins us now from just outside of Washington, D.C. Sabrina, welcome. It is so great to see you, and I cannot wait to be with you in person in Louisiana. Thank you so much for agreeing to do the workshop, and thanks for carving time out of your schedule to join us here on Zoom. Thank you so much for having me. I'm incredibly excited to, to join everybody and to get to, to actually dive into this work, especially in this uh, faith context, because I don't get to do that every day, so it's nice. <laughs> Well, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this workshop that it's going to be centered on uh, misinformation, disinformation. Uh, we live in an information age where, um, sadly, we've gotten to a point where we have to question whether something is true or not. And before we get into some more about misinformation and disinformation, tell us a little bit about the upcoming workshop and really who it's specifically designed for. Absolutely. So this is really um, for church leaders, for um, communicators, folks who are going to be in the thick of, of having to address these issues with it within their congregations. And it's really about giving us uh, some practical applications of the spiritual tools God already gives us um, to approach this problem of misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation or what uh, social scientists are starting to call information disorder. And so it's really just a chance for us to dig into the practical ways that we can approach dealing with this problem so that we can you know, really start to rebuild you know, trust and make sure that people have the tools that they need in order to, to share and to, um, to amplify the truth about what's going on around them. You know, you mentioned earlier that you're, you've been involved in this space, but not necessarily from a faith perspective. And I know in some of the conversations that I've had with you, um, when I initially reached out, I asked the question, have you done anything in the faith space? And your reaction was no, but then you quickly started doing some research and you said, wow, this is a perfect fit of what's happening in the faith space and also what's happening with misinformation uh, in our current society. Yeah, what's funny is that I've been doing this work for a while now, um, just having come up, you know, I'm in that, that generation that is, you know, really come up on digital platforms as they've grown. Um, and so I've done so much you know, organizing and advocacy as this problem has really unfolded. Um, but I'm also a, a person who's deeply spiritual. Um, and so, I've, you know, I, having done these workshops and things for a while, I actually got that little spirit ping to be like, hey, go, go read, read Genesis 3. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is already in here. So that's why I actually have a talk now and a whole, um, you know, set of workshops around the oldest trick in the book, because that's literally what we're dealing with. Um, scripture actually lays out this exact problem, not in the same language that we speak of every day in the social science context, but absolutely the same in form and function. And so it was really uh, thrilling to get to see how this, you know, how we can actually, especially for folks who have the benefit of both, uh, you know, research and a spiritual lens to look at this, I think that you're better positioned than most to actually deal with this problem. So that's what excites me about this kind of thing. For someone who's over the age of 50, uh, it is extremely uh, disheartening and frustrating uh, to know that at one point, um, we had very little information. When I was a child, I had to go to the library and find out a lot of information. And now we've gotten to a point where I can just pull out a device that's in my pocket and get an answer to just about anything. However, as I mentioned earlier, we've gotten to a point where I don't know what's true or what's false, or where it's coming from, or, or, or um, how it may be trying to deceive me. Uh, it's very frustrating to try and find information these days. Yeah, it is. I mean, we are awash in more content than ever before, because right. we've been a time now where, you know, it's not where before we had, you know, consolidated media, media of just a few voices who were able to be heard. There's, you know, pluses and minuses to the fact that now, 
literally anybody, as long as you've got an internet connection and a device in your pocket, you can contribute to the wealth of information that's available. But of course, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily quality information. And so a lot of what we'll focus on in this workshop will be, you know, how do you actually, you know, I talk to people a lot about setting intentions, boundaries, and limits on how, how and what you're engaging with so that you can actually take the time to vet sources, to make sure that what you're looking at is trustworthy um, and so that you don't overwhelm yourself because there is so, so much uh, to go through now. We really wanna make sure that we actually give ourselves the time and space to deal effectively with all that information and to make sure that what we're dealing with is actually high quality, is actually beneficial to us. Well, that was going to be my next question. What are some practical steps that people can take? And I know you're going to go into a lot more when we gather in Woodworth, but what are some practical steps, some things that people can keep in mind when they're navigating all of the information that's available in today's world? Sure. So I think part of it is just remembering, especially for folks of faith, you know, we want to remember there's a reason or many reasons why Jesus calls us to love. And that should be our, you know, predominant uh, defining characteristic, but one of the advantages that gives us in this information environment is that if we have an intention of being loving and expressing love toward others, that's actually very psychologically protective. Because if you look at the, the nature of a lot of the mis and disinformation that's out there, most of it doesn't even pass the smell test if you're not already a little bit inclined to hate the people it's about. And so the more we're anchored in a place of love, the more we're looking for information in order to support our efforts to do good things for ourselves and other people, that is actually really protective when we're thinking about what kinds of information we will and won't engage with. A lot of um, toxic information is really designed to stoke anger, to stoke mistrust, and so if we are really looking at everything through a lens of love, a lot of the worst information won't even really, won't be merit or won't strike us as being worth our time yeah. if we're actually using that as our primary lens. Another really important thing, again, is going back to this idea of setting intentions, boundaries, and limits. So when I think about that, one, you wanna always be really intentional about whatever it is you're doing when you get onto any social media platform or any kind of information source. You wanna always know why you are engaging with it before you decide to engage because the way our phones, the way social media platforms and other um, websites are really designed is to monopolize your attention. And so if you're going into it with a set idea of what you want to use it for, that gives you a better chance of not getting sucked into just mindlessly scrolling and then encountering the worst of the information that's going to be um, thrown at you. The other thing that goes along with that, again, is setting boundaries, right? Deciding in advance who and what you will engage with versus who and what you will ignore. That, again, mm. gives you a, a bit yeah. of a um, some, some blinders, for lack of a better term, so that you're not getting so overwhelmed with so much information that you can't take the time to discern whether or not it's true, take the time to discern whether or not it's useful. And then again, same thing when you're thinking about setting limits, right? Setting a timer on your phone, right? Using the screen time limits that are built into it or whatever device you're working on so that you're not just losing hours and hours at a time, you know, going down rabbit holes on YouTube or any of the number of things that can really be harmful to us when we're engaging in this really overwhelming media environment. The more you can be really intentional, set some boundaries and set some limits when you're engaging with any kind of media, the better chance you have of being able to, one, keep your mind clear enough, keep your heart clear enough to be able to discern what's good and bad information and make sure that what you're engaging with is gonna be useful to you. Fighting Information Disorder with Sabrina Joy Stevens. It is going to be April 18th uh, in Woodworth, Louisiana at the Wesley Center. Uh, you can register today for this important seminar. We hope to see as many pastors and church leaders and communication leaders from inside our conference there. Uh, this will be an important uh, opportunity for all of us to really understand what we mean by misinformation and disinformation, learn how to spot it, and also, of course, um, how we can 
uh, better not only spot it, but uh, prevent us from kind of going down some of those rabbit holes. We're going to have plenty of group exercises. And uh, Sabrina, I am really looking forward to hosting you in Louisiana. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the, uh, at the Wesley Center in Woodworth. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much.